Sheeno Vera, Sean O'Malley, these boys just can't get it right. I mean, this is oil and water, and this is one of these that just isn't going to go away. And you know what? They don't generally go this way. I mean, a lot of times here, let's back up to their fight. Sean O'Malley, huge star, coming in, undefeated. Cheeto Vera on a pretty good roll, but definitely not a star of the level of Sean O'Malley in terms of notoriety. Sean was the, the favorite, but in this sport, a lot of perception is reality, as you guys know. So when Cheeto won, it goes down as an upset, but it actually went down as a pretty big upset. And it was one of these upsets where Sean Stock didn't budge. Sean, Sean Stock did not move even a little bit because he got hurt in the fight. So there was always this default mechanism of, well, yeah, you lost, but, but here's why, and that was unexpected, and it goes away. That's good news for Sean, not to mention Sean plays everything right. Came right out. Taking shots at, at Cheeto Vera, moved on to another opponent, puts train. Like, Sean just does everything right. He's, he's just one of these guys where it's just going to work out. It, it's just going to work out for Sean. Sean's going to have a good life. What do you call it? A charmed life. Okay. But the other side for Cheeto was Cheeto got a major bounce here, and people tried to take away from his victory for the same reasons they didn't mind Sean's loss, which was the injury. They tried to take away and said, well, yeah, you beat him, but he had a bad leg. Now, the reason that's very unfair is Cheeto manned up and walked out there as a three-to-one underdog. How would you like to be stuck in a steel cage with Sean O'Malley? Just start with that. How would you like to be stuck in a steel cage with Sean O'Malley for up to 15 minutes? How would you like to be stuck in a steel cage with Sean O'Malley half-naked and the entire world watching? Okay, Cheeto did all of these things. Cheeto jumped out of the frying pan and into the fire and didn't flinch and found a way to win. He absolutely gets his full credit. He does. He should. Cheeto gets signed up, has another match. He's going to go right into Jose Aldo. Now, that's probably the one that he's really going to need to bounce him into another dimension within this sport. All the while, Cheeto and Sean just will not quit bickering. And it's one of these things where Sean, who will remain as of press time right now, a bigger star. Even though he lost, he is the bigger star of the two. Sean has never actually said he wants a rematch. He's actually never even tried to get a rematch. He is more than happy to move on and let Cheeto move on. He just would like it noted for the record that he hurt his foot, and that's why Cheeto won. But it's very interesting because every now and then you will have guys like this, and they'll hug it out at the end, and it's actually a bonding moment. One of these things. Like, I have one of these to personalize with Michael Bisping. I beat Michael Bisping. We work together. How are you going to work together after you beat a guy up? Well, because a lot of people thought he won the fight. It just wasn't the judges. So it always kept us real even, right? Like, I go, hey, Michael, I beat you. And Michael could go, well, I got screwed against you. Like, it's just one of those things. So we're just even. It's never affected our, our friendship or relation. There's no alpha off when we're together. It's just one of these things. It was an opportunity where that Cheeto and O'Malley could have done the same thing. They elected to go the other way. They elected to go the other way with it and absolutely become enemies and despise each other. And I bring this entire topic to you because the kids on the underground had a question, very simple question. Should Sean O'Malley get a rematch with Cheeto Vera? And I didn't like the wording of the question because it presupposes that somebody is taking that from him. I think the correct question would be, does Sean O'Malley want a rematch with Cheeto? Because Sean's in a very interesting spot where he did not lose any ground. None. People have forgot it happened. He's referenced the match every time he's had an opportunity and his clicks and the attack, it's going crazy. He's gaining steam in defeat. So I don't know how much Sean even wants a rematch. Sean wouldn't mind it. I mean, I can, I can speak for Sean when I tell you he's not scared of it. They offer him the rematch. He'll take it. That's not the question. Question the kids on the underground asked is, should he get one? Which presupposes that somebody's holding him back from that opportunity. I don't think that's what's happening. I don't think it's what's happened at all. I think they both just went on their own path or just going to continue to hate one another. And eventually, someday, perhaps, it may not be unless there's a title on the line that, that Sean Shelby even has an interest in rematching them. I don't know. I'm speaking way out of turn here. I don't know. But I do sense 
that there's no phenomenon out there pushing to get these guys back together. It's one of these interesting things. They needed each other, and maybe more so Cheetah, uh, Cheeto Vera needed Sean. But they don't really need each other anymore. There's, there's getting headlines talking about each other with no match coming up or even rumors of a rematch coming up. It's one of these very weird purgatory type situations. The unicorn that only comes around once every blue moon. Unicorn and blue moon, Vince. Do you think I, do I need any other adages? Do you think? Have I proved my point that this is rare? Yes. It's rare. Everything Sugar Sean does is rare. It's just one of these things. Meanwhile, while I'm reading about this, I see that Megan Anderson and Amanda Nunes do have their match rescheduled. Now, guys, upset alert. Upset alert. And I am not predicting you an upset. I am giving you an alert. If you are a gamer, if you like to handicap the action, Megan is currently plus 1,000. Megan Anderson can go with Amanda Nunes in the stand-up. Keep that in mind. She can go with her. Many people are saying, based on resume, she can beat her in the stand-up. But I would only remind you that Amanda Nunes' takedowns, while they aren't bad, are not some kind of George St. Pierre where she can just swipe you off her feet any damn time she chooses. It's not like that. She's mainly a stand-up fighter, and so if you tell me somebody can beat her at the stand-up, which is mainly what she does, you have my attention. I'm not suggesting for you, okay, that Megan's the one that's going to go in and dethrone her. I am telling you straight up, Megan can give her problems in the stand-up, which is where the better part of this contest is going to be contested. This is one of those matches that you should not take your eye off of, and moreover, Amanda should not take her eye off of. I don't suggest she is. But we have seen this, and we've seen it as recently as the past 12 months. I will insert for you John Jones versus Dominic Reyes. We did not know going into that fight that this young and hungry and undefeated Reyes, I mean, he only had 11 fights. Yeah, he was undefeated. One of them was against a world champion, Chris White, but we didn't know Reyes was as good as he was. I mean, Reyes is, Reyes is fantastic. He's fantastic. He fought for the world championship twice this year. He's the only 205-pounder to fight for the world championship twice this year, which means in many ways, he starred the division. In many ways, Dominic Reyes was the most successful 205-pounder this year because he fought for the championship twice and no other 205-pounder can say that. I only bring that to you because every now and then there's one of these nights that you can dismiss and you think that's never going to happen. I can't believe you're bringing up and it's done. You go, oh my God, you were right. How did I not know this was going to happen? Megan and Amanda is not likely to be a long, drawn-out, back-and-forth battle. Whatever happens in the first round, whoever wins the first round wins that fight. I get it. So I'm not going to hold on to this all night long. But when those ladies get in there, if Megan gives her problems in the first round, you're going to see problems in the next four rounds. Megan is big and strong and long, and she knows how to kickbox. Amanda knows how to get inside. She's powerful as hell, and she's mean. She is going to be on you trying to do damage every second until that referee tells her to stop. It's a good match. Plus 1,000? No. No. This, it's a closer match than that. Mark my words on that one. 